Morning guys, so I was going to give you an Apex Up tutorial but <laughs> this morning, but I thought maybe it's more interesting for a story. Well, I graduated, well, let's begin here. I've, I've been using Linux a long time now and I even gradu um, gravitated to to studying in University of Helsinki where Linux was sort of uh, founded. <laughs> I didn't actually ever meet Linus, he had long left by then. So basically I've been, I, I've basically been a Linux user since then. So my career has been like Linuxy, DevOpsy, but also I've been quite passionate about the web. So I guess my next few jobs are categorized by working with the web, trying to leverage my, my Linux um, uh, expertise, and finally, I started my own business, Web Converger, which this channel should be all about, um, where I married my Linux skills with my web skills to create like a web chaos distribution. Unfortunately, um, about two, well, I, I moved to Singapore about five years ago, and, and um, if anyone who lives in Singapore knows is that maintaining like your past to actually reside here your employment past is actually quite tricky you have to make quite a bit of money and about three years ago um where converger has had good years i mean i'm it's actually still making me some money um but not enough <laughs> And um, unfortunately, I think the web kiosk business, let's be honest, it's all being, you, you don't go and use a public kiosk very often. You're more likely to use one of these to get your information. So I took a job at Spool, thankfully. I guess at the same time, I was, um, I, I got to become the AWS user group leader here in Singapore. I wasn't heavily using AWS. I just was dabbling in it and I was very interested. I guess I was just like using the basic stuff like S3. Um, but at Spool, they're very AWS um, committed or, you know, right. It's, they're doing the right thing by offloading all this stuff to, to AWS where they can. So, oh yeah, this is my work. So Spool, what is Spool? They do, they do video streaming. And I joined the company uh, as a DevOps engineer, I guess. Um, and uh, on the technology front, uh, back end is Rails and front end is, is the web, uh, which I think was, was a Node.js application. So I noticed that the web was very slow and I guess my first little thing was making their website static. And I've written something similar here for my own blog. Basically, I used Golang, which was very new to, to me at the time, a couple of years ago, and, uh, and, and obviously very new to Spool, but thankfully they allowed me to write uh, a Golang static site generator for, for Spool.com. Um, and then, uh, what is the next thing? I guess in parallel, I was working with the video ingestion stuff uh, and, and getting my hands into with, uh, with Lambda. I mean, I, I didn't know what Lambda was. I didn't know what serverless was. Um, and to be honest, my, my JavaScript skills were, I guess, a bit antiquated. So, I mean, I mean, like many of you guys, I'm sure you've been, we've all been using JavaScript for forever, but it's only in the last couple of years with NPM and ES6, things have just got real, real nuts. So, so basically I started implementing um, um, processes and things where I could in, in serverless um, and in, in, in JavaScript. And I, I must say, I was pretty stunned by the potential of 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 Lambda and Serverless. I mean, I I've been personally hosting a lot of my stuff in Docker, uh, Core OS. Um, uh, I've been I even dabbled in ECS uh, and Serverless. The Lambda 
is such a breath of fresh air. R running um, ECS or Docker, it, just don't do it, trust me. Save yourself some time. The complexity involved in doing that is insane and it's it's terrible. Serverless is a breath of fresh air. And the only downside was that, let me have a swig of coffee. The thing that pissed me off was was that um, Node.js is kind of difficult to work with. Um, you know, with these promise chains and things like this. I mean, it took me a while to figure it out at work, and then and then and then when I was like trying to to <laughs> I guess share the knowledge with my colleagues, I I found it painful myself to I. I mean, I work with people. I need to, I need to say to them like, this is how promises work. And sometimes, I, th I thought it's kind of difficult. Uh, I guess, I guess a lot of Node.js stuff maybe comes down to the tooling. See, GoLang, the code format I think amounts to a lot of. <laughs> it helps a lot. Okay, so I was a little bit um, uneasy, shall we say, with with Node.js. Um, yeah, it's like time and time again, we, we come to this thing where I guess async await would have solved the problem, but like where there was some sort of like weird race condition or something like that. And furthermore, another thing that I didn't like about using JavaScript at work is that um, the testing framework, I mean, I could probably blame myself for not just saying, look, we're using this testing framework, but the testing to be honest, I think I wrote my own assert uh, way of doing things, but no one else was doing it, I guess. Anyway, the testing, the whole the whole thing just seemed too fragile to me, so I was definitely looking to to maybe try and go. So when I tried go with uh, with Lambda, the only thing that seemed to exist was this thing called EAWC, and I didn't. Um, I didn't like it for some reason. I can't remember why. And then I discovered a not as as polished version called Apex, um, which seemed the style. I mean, polished would be the wrong word. It just didn't look as popular. Maybe well, actually, it's got six thousand stars. Uh, <laughs> um, it didn't look um, it had missing stuff or something. I can't remember. So I started using Apex and I was pleasantly surprised it actually quite works that the design of the software was pretty good. Uh, I obviously investigated who wrote it. The guy behind it, um, TJ Holloway Chuck, ends up being like a huge, huge star in the, in the Node.js Node world who's moved to the Golang world. And obviously through Apex and following that project very closely, um, TJ launched Apex up so it made it very easy. Okay, let me let me backtrack a bit. Apex makes it easy to deploy like Lambda functions, which get triggered by SNS. In oh, what is SNS? Uh, it's like Kafka. It's like a messaging system inside Amazon. So there's probably a better explanation about what SNS is. But um, Apex solves that Lambda problem very very well. But but obviously. Once you've tasted Lambda, once you've tasted service, you want to go to the next level and attach uh, a public interface, i.e. a RESTful interface to your Lambda functions. And doing that um, with SNS is just terrible. So I was looking for um, an answer to that. And when um, TJ launched Apex up, he's, here's a video about him uh, setting it up or something. Uh, when he launched Apex up, that solved the problem really, um, uh, about hosting web services with app. And and um, since then, my productivity with web services is just like, boom, you know, it's like, I'm loving it. Um, it's just so easy now to just write a simple interface, um, um, uh, have, a, have a simple end-to-end -end test to go with it, deploy it, and you know, it's like, I know it's going to work. It's 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 great. So yeah, at, at work, um, oof, I've implemented a few things now with Apex Up in production. 
like every time you watch a movie with with um, with Spool, the playlist, the sort of M three U eight thing, or, or the Dash manifest, even that's that actually comes out of Apex Up. Um, maybe I should tell you why Apex Up is quite interesting. The API gateway is very difficult to work with. So what Apex Up does is basically it's a catch-all at the Apex gateway, and then um, and then their weird interface that Amazon dreamt up is now mapped to a very clear request response model, which every language implements. Uh, but and Go, Golang implements that we you know with the standard H two re request response. Uh, let me just uh, let me just uh, track down something. Uh, this very standard interface is how it's implemented. Uh, I'm sure you can use your own language. I mean, you, you, using JavaScript, you, you know, obviously you can use any language. Um, so anyway, TJ maps this weird API gateway stuff to a standard interface. Why is this amazing? So you don't have to deal with AWS's stuff. Um, and, and more importantly, um, you almost step away from all this like weird SNS sort of AWS esoteric stuff. You you actually can start implementing stuff that works locally, so you can develop locally, um, and deploy it on the AWS infrastructure, and it and you have perfect confidence everything works because of the standard interfaces. So um, I don't like feel locked in uh, to AWS or anything because I feel I can get this, these same things that I write and different things uh, and different uh, hosting platforms, including my own, if I wanted to. So yes, yeah, since then, with Apex Up, I've written um, some production stuff at work, the playlist, the, the way that the new catch-up stuff is gonna work. Um, I'm also implemented some stuff about the way we uh, track, what do you call it? Uh, statistics or events that's happening at the company. Um, and yeah, writing in Go is something I really recommend you guys get into. I think I'll try come up with a couple of workflow videos to help you. But this, sorry, is a very long video just introducing to you to this whole Apex Up Go workflow, which I found extremely beneficial. And if you know better, please let me know. And uh, yeah, please, please indicate that you want to see more by giving this uh, video a like. Uh, and thanks for bearing with me. <laughs> Bye, guys.